Welcome back to Who Chose. I'm going to show you today uh, the process that I go through to change out my nutrient reservoir for the system. Uh, now, my nutrient reservoir is actually a chop and flip IBC uh, food safe water container uh, that I've made into the reservoir for both the flood and drain and NFT system. Uh, I usually only have to swap it out once a month, but I'm pretty loose uh, with that uh, system. And you can extend that out with regular top-ups of nutrient solution. However, just to start afresh from, you know, basic trace elements uh, and uh, other nutrients that the plants might use more of that you can't keep track of over a longer period of time, uh, I like to empty the reservoir and start afresh pretty much on a monthly basis. Uh, you can start to see in the system when you've got bulk amount of plants, nutrient deficiencies. Uh, for instance, some of the tomato tops are getting a lighter green around the edges and a darker green in the veins of the leaf, which says to me that there might be a potassium deficiency in the system, which wouldn't surprise me at all, just due to the amount of fruiting happening within the system at this time. All right, so for a climate like mine where we have, you know, relentless sun, uh, I have to wait until the afternoon when the sun's not as harsh or at night even better, um, just because there is about a half an hour period where you're going to switch the pump off and the plants will be using the water that they've got stored um, in the roots or that slows down throughout the system uh, as it flows through. It is a process that's slightly time sensitive, so you don't want to turn the pump off, empty the system and walk away for more than you know 10 minutes. So let's turn that pump off and we will drain the system out, wash it out with a hose to get any growth in the tank out of the system or anything that's fallen in there and we'll take it from there. So when I initially set up this system, I set up the system so that the IBC drains back towards the drain point on the tank. It's something that I would can take into consideration uh, the moment you set up a reservoir, how you're going to drain it and where you're going to drain it into. Um, mine just drains down the property, so it's, it's not directly entering any water systems where it could cause uh, algal blooms. And the plants... Uh, on the downside of the property, you're actually, you know, having a little bit of a good time because of the extra nutrients that they're getting, especially when it rains. So let's turn the power off to the pump. And we can drain out the reservoir. You eating the tomatoes, you tomato thief. Huh? No, for me. So it's become a bit of a jungle uh, to access the nutrient solution nowadays. So I just have to push all the tomato plants aside. And as you can see on the bottom of the system, uh, there's been a lot of nutrients precipitating out of the system, uh, which I'll now wash out of the tank with a hose. I also clean the pump filter just by running the hose through it. And I always check the pipes up the other end of the nutrient film technique system um, because this can knock particulates into the pipes once the pump starts again. So I'm fairly certain that the precipitation that you just saw on the bottom of the tank was from me being lazy and uh, just dumping a ton of potash into the system, uh, liquid potash. and I actually saw as I dumped it into the system that it precipitated. Uh, I'm pretty sure it just reacted with one of the other minerals in the system. And uh, you could see like a green cloud of precipitation come out of solution. And uh, so that just goes to the point that you really need to be careful when you're adding in nutrients that you water them down enough um, so that the they don't, nutrient shock the nutrient solution as you 
pour them in, uh, which I will, won't do in the future again. So now I'm going to fill the reservoir up once I turn the tap off so that it's not draining anymore. And as it's filling, we can go and measure out our nutrients uh, and add them into the system once it's full. You don't want to add them into the system too early. You want you, you want your reservoir to be full before you add them in so that it has the full amount of water to mix because once the nutrients are in solution, they start to uh, be able to interact with each other uh, and they're made for the specific ratio that the manufacturer has outlaid on the packaging to be in solution. So if they're uh, over-concentrated in the solution, they can ha- make interactions which you don't want to happen. So just fill your reservoir up and then add the nutrients slowly so that you get that nice concentration that the manufacturer wants you to achieve. All right, let's fill it. So now we can measure out our nutrients. So I always go by the manufacturer's guidelines 99% of the time because generally they know what ratios to put their product in. The only times that I will step away from those guidelines is when there's a deficiency in the system and then I'll add in whatever nutrient I deem that I need at the time. So at the moment, I've been adding in a soluble sulfate of potash powder into the system and you, they come in a liquid form and a granular form and obviously the granular form is better value so when i need to add in a nutrient that i've identified as a deficiency in the system i will do that uh, when i start the solution however i will always start from a base guideline of the manufacturer and then once i identify a nutrient deficiency i'll add it in so even though there are deficiencies in the system at the moment i will start the cycle off on a baseline let it run for a week and then i'll add in some more potash or calcium or whatever I feel the system needs. So for my specific nutrient, it's 120 grams per 100 liters of the nutrient and trace elements and 80 grams of calcium per 100 liters. So I'm gonna fill the reservoir up to 400 liters. You just times those values by four. So 480 grams of nutrient and trace elements and 360 of calcium. Every so often, I like to do a nutrient flush as well. So this time I'm just going to go from one nutrient solution to the other. But in between, if you find that your plants are having a problem absorbing nutrients, it can be a good idea to run the system on just water for a day or two. This can also help uh, remove a buildup of salts in the system uh, if you're having that problem. So while the pump isn't running, I'll show you how dry the roots get um, because there's no water or nutrient solution flowing through the system. So the pump's been off for about 10 minutes and you can see all these roots, they're dry. Well, they're moist, but they won't stay moist for long. And this is what would happen if your pump were to fail. So the plants will only last a little bit without the pumps running. And here's another example. So before I put the nutrients back in the system, I'm gonna turn the pumps on so that I have an accurate level because uh, I like to have the level at 400 whilst water is circulating through the system. So whatever the system can hold plus 
400. So I'll turn the pumps back on. That'll get fresh water circulating throughout the system. And then once that level hits 400, I'll turn the tap off and we'll add in the nutrients. So my system's a little different because I've also got to take into consideration the fact that I have a grow bed flooding and draining, which adds about 50 to 60 litres to the system fluctuating regularly rather than just the water flowing through the NFT system. Uh, but it, it's not really that much of a hassle to figure out because you just have to wait until the bell siphon drains to the bottom and then you've got your full system height. Uh, it's going to be really hard for me to show you how I spread this out in the water, um, but essentially I'm just trying to scatter it over as much surface area as possible to get the most amount of uh, nutrient in solution as fast as possible, and then I'll give it a stir with my nutrient wand or a mixing spoon. Uh, I'll try and get that shot for you though. So that's reading an EC of about 2.4 to 2.2, which is perfect because um, there's still a lot of nutrients that haven't dissolved yet. So it should hit about uh, from 2.4 to 2.8. Uh, and then that's an ideal nutrient level for my nutrients. So as you can see, my nutrient reservoir is fairly hassle-free to change. And I was really lucky that I fluked on a design that works so easily. So if you're going to be making a system like this, I highly recommend having it drain without you physically having to do anything other than turn a tap. Um, and then it just makes changing the reservoir so hassle-free. So basically all I have to do is turn off the pumps, open the drain, wait for it to drain, give it a bit of a rinse, close the drain, fill it up, mix the nutrients into the solution, and then it's done. So if you're going to be doing it on a regular basis, you want to make it as hassle-free as possible. And um, my system just turned out that way. It was a fluke. <laughs> All right, let's close her up. And she's good to go for at least a week or so. Uh, I might need to top up the water because there's just, you know, so much foliage in the system, but I won't top up nutrients for at least another week. And I can determine whether I need nutrients by checking the EC of solution and comparing it to the EC that you started with. So if the EC drops or if you've over diluted the solution, you may need to pull it back up to the EC that you started with and then if you do see any nutrient deficiencies throughout the system, you can address them as you come to them. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Huchos. It was just a boring old maintenance episode, but it gives you an idea of what I have to go through when I'm changing the full reservoir. All right, I'll see you next time.